the concepts that are out there could be promising for deep space travel. There is, there is a little bit of everything that, that people are trying. If we can ever get there, it is, it is a very bright, promising future. So we start with an atom. It has a nucleus, which is composed of protons and neutrons. Protons are the ones with a positive electric charge, and neutrons have no electric charge. And then around the nucleus, there's an electrons running around. How do we get to fusion versus fission, nuclear fusion versus nuclear fission? So we're talking about the nucleus either falling apart, that's fission, or taking two small nuclei, fusing them to produce one slightly bigger nucleus through fusion. It turns out that a nucleus contains around 60 protons and neutrons together. That's the most stable nucleus you can have. In fission, they take much bigger nuclei, and those can fall apart. They can do it spontaneously. Of course, in when we're trying to produce energy, we stimulate the reaction, and energy comes out when a big nucleus falls apart. In fusion, they take very light nuclei, and when those very light nuclei fuse, turns out energy is also released. So in both cases, energy is released. What has to happen for fusion energy to really happen, there has to be lots and lots of particles, lots of charged particles, flying around and sort of interacting, running to each other lots and lots of times. Just a handful of the many, many, many interactions actually result in a fusion. And when you have lots and lots of particles with electromagnetic charge, well, that's a plasma. So fusion typically happens in a plasma. To get fusion energy, especially here on Earth, as opposed to on the sun, there are lots and lots of things that have to go right. And just about nothing can go wrong for us to be able to extract energy in a continuous, sustainable, predictable way. There's two traditional approaches. One is, is to try to hold that plasma with magnetic fields. Plasma is hot, you can't touch it. So the first big challenge is to hold the plasma steady, long enough, at high enough density and high enough temperature. You can play with those three things. Long enough, high enough density, and high enough temperature. The challenge there has been, of course, to keep that long enough. So in that case, it's called magnetic confinement. Another approach, sort of the other extreme, is to try to take a plasma at very high density for a very short time, but at very high temperature and very, very high density. They usually do that with lasers. They take a, a solid target, and then you shine as many lasers as you can get from all directions onto the target, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. And in the end, you compress it, you ionize it, so it becomes a plasma. But you do it for a very, very short time. So it's not, you don't hold it for seconds or minutes. It's for a tiny fraction of a second that you have this tiny little explosion. But it's long enough for fusion to happen and for energy to be released. We now know it can be. And then you do that many, many, many times a minute. People are, scientists especially, are very good at dreaming and their concepts and some research into really old scales, just about old scales. I have not really heard of fusion uh, engines for cars yet. Wait a minute, what are you doing, Doc? I need fuel. Go ahead, quick, get in the car. The, the more traditional approaches has been the big power plant for energy production. There are many concepts are working in more compact reactors. So to power not a state or a county, but a, a small city. There's also uh, concepts for fusion reactors for space propulsion. So those would be much smaller, of course. There's a lot of work to do, but the concepts that are out there could be promising for deep space travel. There is, there is a little bit of everything that, that people are trying because it's if we can ever get there, it is, it is a very bright, promising future. NSF promotes progress of science. We look at where the frontiers of research are, where the, commu the scientific community is going, what are the, the, the most interesting ideas coming out of the community, and we support those. Fusion Quest has been a quest uh, of the scientific community for some time. 
at the National Science Foundation, we focus on, on, on really supporting the fundamental building blocks, which many of which can, can, can apply to, to fusion energy. We support research in plasma physics at NSF and the Division of Physics to really understand the fundamental processes of plasma turbulence, electrons and protons, how do they interact together. And that contributes to fundamental understanding of how the plasma in a fusion reactor may work. It also contributes to, to understanding the stars and the merging of neutron stars, of supermassive black holes. That contributes to our understanding of the universe and it contributes uh, to, to our understanding of how we may build a future fusion reactor. Now, plasma physics is not everything there is to a fusion reactor. There's huge materials challenges associated with the walls wherever they are, if there's going to be neutron bombardment. And so our colleagues in the Division of Materials Research may support some of, some of that work on, on the materials. It's a, it's a tremendous control problem. So that may fall into the realm of our engineering colleagues. In order to be able to, to design, we have to be able to predict. We have to be able to model. It's an extremely challenging problem to model all of that plasma and maybe the lasers or the magnetic fields. And there we work with our computational mathematic colleagues that help develop algorithms. So NSF really contributes at every part of something like a fusion energy project.